Hello, my friends, and I hope you are having a fantastic day. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about a recently released game called Once Human. There's a lot of things that have been going on about it, and of course, I have some thoughts or else I wouldn't be talking about it. We know how it works here by now. So I'm going to start with this article that talks about the main complaint that people seem to be having about a game that otherwise sounds fantastic. Uh, this is on Games Radar by Ali Jones. It's former World of Warcraft security expert defends survival hit once humans unpopular privacy policy. Fear mongering on social media is boring as shit. Which, yeah, it is. I, <laughs> I think we're getting enough of that right now for sure. A former World of Warcraft developer and security expert has defended anticipated survival game Once Human's controversial terms of service. Once Human was one of the top wishlisted games on Steam ahead of its release yesterday. Since that release, however, the Once Human terms of service have garnered a lot of attention, sparking a wave of negative reviews over criticism that the amount of data the game collects is too invasive. As a result, Once Human currently sits at mixed reviews on Steam, despite its successful 80,000 player launch. That's a lot of players. The negative response drew the attention of indie developer Jason Hall. Hall, whose background includes security at both World of Warcraft developer Blizzard and the United States Department of Energy, issued a post earlier today addressed to all the people currently freaking out about the once human privacy policy. For all the people currently freaking out about the once human privacy policy, the policy states under personal information we receive from you that they receive name and contact details such as first and last name, title, prefix, email address, telephone number, instant messaging account, postal address, date of birth, age, gender, country slash region, and government issued ID, such as passport information as required by applicable laws for age verification and correction of personal information. The general internet has warped this into a demanded requirement and a privacy issue. It's not. These are only sent to the company when required by applicable local laws. This is why it says received from you and as required by applicable laws. In some countries, government issued IDs are required for live service game access. If you are not in one of these countries, you are obviously not asked or required to present those documents. Fear mongering on social media is boring as shit. Now what a lot of people forget is there are plenty of countries that actually require not only government ideas to verify the identity of the person getting online, but to identify the age because there are in fact laws in those countries regarding how long, for example, young people can be on the internet. And when I say there are laws, I mean they literally track it with software on the computer. This isn't something that, that's half-assed. And so these, these companies have to collect this data if it's going to be an online service game. Now, I'm not saying that that's a good thing because obviously that is completely retarded. But... All that information that we just listed off is information that the software on those computers generally gathers and sends to the publisher of the game who then processes it, deletes it, and has you verified on their system for whatever local laws. I mean, there are literally places where you have to take a picture of your ID, upload the picture, I mean, like with your face and your ID next to your face so that they can see you know, that it's your ID, upload that to them so that they can verify you are who you are claiming you are and thus you are able to use that within the letter of the local law. People do need to understand that they are not just taking this information. I understand why it's scary, especially in today's age where software and everything is gathering more and more information on us and using it in ways that we are not being asked about before it happens. But in this case, this is more of an issue of complying with governmental practices as opposed to being scummy information stealers. They are two separate issues. And I know it's difficult to divide them, especially since a lot of times the information that is getting stolen is information they've gathered for government purposes and so on and so forth. But it's important to remember to take these things with a, a grain of salt sometimes and, and take a breath and realize Maybe this part doesn't apply to me. Once Human is a game I have actually been look, interested in looking into. I'm sure you'll get you'll guess why once we take a little bit more of a look at it. OK. 
Okay, I kind of like the floaty people and shimmery walls. That's interesting. Uh, and you get to build your own home. Let's take a take a look what that looks like. Oh, it is straight up building. I guess you gotta get to tame those boars too. Okay, bus guy is really cool. As is house guy. Wait, was that an umbrella without a head under any of it? We gotta check that out. Oh my god, that is an umbrella as a head. That is cool. Okay. Oh, that's pretty interesting. You can keep looking at these images here real quick. Shimmery door thing, so that must act as a divider between areas. You got a bunch of arms hanging out underneath them. Okay. Floaty kids, a guy with a big thing to shoot on his head. Very Lovecraftian and Doom. I like it. A flamethrower. Who doesn't love a flamethrower? Okay. Let's take a look at what they say about the game. The apocalypse changed everything. Human, animal, plant. And all are infested by an alien creature, Stardust. So that sounds like they're going to, they're kind of taking a page out of Lovecraft's Color Out of Space. Uh, if you've read it, you'll understand why I say that. As a metahuman, you can enjoy the contamination and use the power of Stardust. Play alone or join others to fight, build, and explore. When the world is in chaos, you are our last hope survive in the wilderness you wake up in the middle of nowhere you'll have to brace yourself for the cruelty of nature from monsters to lack of food however stardust's influence does not restrict to living things it also affects the soil and water eating polluted food and drinking dirty water will reduce your sanity very Lovecraftian. When your sanity drops, your max at HP would drop accordingly. To eat or not to eat, it is a question. Fight against monsters. Battle numerous enemies that are once human and challenging bosses from another dimension to gain powerful items and ease the stardust pollution. You are not only fighting for yourself, but also fighting for the survivors. Okay, system requirements. Now the thing I am most curious about are the reviews. Now, we already know that there's going to be some in here about the terms of service. Uh, here we have the most helpful reviews. First is by this fellow wet. The game is not perfect by any means. It has bugs, it crashes, it has terrible policy for purchased cosmetics. They're making them account wide in August instead of locked to single, single character. That was actually one issue I saw with the game previously where you had to buy the cosmetics again for each of your characters. However, they are going to make them account wide as opposed to making you buy each cosmetic multiple times. So they did actually listen to the feedback on that. Though, in fairness, that is feedback they can actually change. They can't change the local laws of the various countries that buy the game. But it is still an incredibly fun experience with a dev team that cares a ton about the lifespan of the game. This game manages to feel completely fresh in the genre without doing anything that changes the already functioning formula for MMORPGs. Playing with friends is enjoyable, and the dungeon-type content that is released so far is incredibly fun. I have never enjoyed grinding dungeons for loot, but this game made queuing up with three friends and running a dungeon 45 times indescribably fun. If you're looking for... Okay, I'm sorry, but that does not sound fun. I've, I've played my share of MMOs, and that does not sound fun. But maybe they do something different, and it is fun. If you're looking for a great free-to-play game that doesn't unfairly punish you for being a free-to-play player yet, always yet, they always start out fun, and then they get worse as you go down the line, then this is my top choice. A side note to the devs, keep doing what you're doing. The community absolutely respects your desire to make changes based on feedback and your commitment to improve the game based on our current suggestions is proof that you're worthy of my time. Thanks for making this game. So, interesting. Apparently there's fishing and the fellow can make an aquarium. That makes him happy. Pros, it's fun. Cons, it's jank. Uh, this person says, Rust and the Division got a baby. Once human, my friend's 
who play CS2 said, if I post a review on Once Human and it gets 500 likes and 250 awards, that he will buy me an RTX 4070 and two kilos of lemon. So I'm just going to leave this here. Help a brother. Or sorry, help a brother. Press exit it out. Anyway. Here's a not recommended. Game is fantastic, but due to the wipe, after each season, this game is a big no. That is an interesting bit of detail. So apparently, between each season, they wipe the game. Still cannot recommend it because of this sole reason, as it will most likely make a lot of players with a life, career, family leave the game. People don't have the time to level again and again each season. It's fine with a game like D3 where you can hit a max level in 10 minutes, but not here. I will play the first season because I like the game, but if the wipe thing doesn't change, I'm not going to stay. And that's a fair reason, I've got to say. A lot of people like to continue working on their stuff and not starting over again. Now, for the people who do like to start over again, who like that kind of setup it'll be enjoyable so interesting this game is free and it plays better than half the games that cost 70 dollars smooth gameplay great gunplay rpg elements fun all in all a lot of stuff to do so that's cool i was going to give this game a great review but upon hearing about wipes every six weeks even on pve servers you will have to use in-game currency to buy your own stuff back after each wipe oof I think that the game is now awful, as I do not wish to purchase my own items, and I do not wish to restart every six weeks. Awful decision and ruined the game for people like me. Okay, I find it interesting that I haven't heard anything about that specifically to date, but I get it. A game's great. People complaining about TOS and privacy have clearly never read these documents for any other game before and have zero clue what they're actually talking about. Yeah, I imagine if you look at Helldivers... And other similar games, they have the same thing. Using your brain is hard. As for Battle Pass and microtransactions, standard stuff for free-to-play games. None of it is PTW, so I don't know what, what that means. If anybody would like to tell me what the acronym PTW means, please do. Oh, play to pit. I got it. I got it. I, re I know what it is. It's play to win. None of it's play to win. Woohoo! So unless you need to have the best looking Karen on a server, who cares? People are idiots. So this person very much likes the game. Very good game. Hard to believe it's free to play. And this one, you can't change your interaction key from F to E. And again, this, this is actually a fair complaint. There's nothing I hate more than when they use a, a unique interaction key and of course every other game in the world uses e and they use f and now i have to adjust to the fact that they use f now realistically i will just adjust to it i don't think every game needs to be changeable and i do understand why but look a developer has responded. Dear Meta, the implementation of key rebindings is currently in progress for the game and it is anticipated to be available in mid-August. Thank you for your support. Okay, cool. See, guy comes planes. They say, hey, we're willing to change this. Everybody's happy, right? Right? Very cool open world survival. Fairly casual for now. It's fun and it's free. Play it now while there's still an active player base. Not a bad piece of advice. It's fun and grindy best free game out there right now i would like to see some more of these some of these reviews about you can tell i don't look at reviews too often because i don't i don't know how to get to them can i just see the oh wait maybe it's down at the bottom and i missed it oh there we go see that's really long but they're happy with it happy with it happy with it oh let's see here in regard to the privacy and tos please read them carefully do not ignore this game because of negative comments all that gathered information, ID, etc., is related to Asia regions, China, Korea, and so on. For EU users and ROW, they collect information almost like anyone else, nothing more. You won't be prompted for anything since they follow the regional laws of data protection. In regard of hidden shady software, some mention, I did not find any processes, be them hidden or not, nor I found registry key anomalies in locals underscore machine. So do not falter or panic. Nobody will steal anything more than what is already provided. The game itself. And then they talk about the game itself. The reason us Chinese are asked for our ID is to prevent kids who is under 18 to play games for too much time. That is all. The official reason at least. And for another matter, gather information which fucking company don't do that. Okay. 
So how about a negative review? Can we find a negative review? A lot of them about... Find it funny. This one's actually marked theirs as received product for free when it's a free game. Funny guy. Wow. Oh, okay, okay. We'll go with the too long didn't read. This privacy policy is problematic because it lacks clarity, transparency, and appears to overcollect personal information without sufficient justification or safeguards for user privacy. Regularly, privacy policies should prioritize user content, data security, limited data collection, and clear communication of data usage purposes. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, guys, the reason the privacy policy or, or the, the personal information policy is the way it is, is because of local laws. There's really nothing you're going to be able to do about that. And for the most part, unless you live in a location where that is something that they have to do for you, you're not going to see it. It's not going to bother you. They're just going to take the same information. Every other game you download for Steam takes. So there's that going on for you. All that said, do you guys think it looks like a game you'd be interested in? I... I would kind of be interested in it. I don't know if I have anybody who would play it with me. But I imagine if I really wanted to, I could gather up a few. And I might. We'll see. I believe I said Thursday the 18th we will do a stream. I will be playing, I think, some more Dragon Age. I might ask if you would rather see me play Dragon Age or, or is it Still Wakes the Deep? It's one of those two. I'll have to I'll have to look up the name of the other one because I'm really thinking about playing that one. So I'll put that in the comments. You can tell me which you would prefer to watch me play because I'm happy either way. Streaming really is more or less a, a reason to play video games for me. Oh, I did play video games. I played Neverwinter Night this Saturday. Cool. For those of you who are new here, I do have memberships if you are interested. Uh, you get immediate access to... All of my videos, the moment they drop at about 3 a.m. every day because I'm insane and have issues. Uh, if you would like to become a member of the channel, that is definitely open and does help support me. If you're looking for other ways to support, there is a throne wish list in there. And I'm honestly, if I ever get anything off of that, I will probably die of shock. So don't even worry about it. Uh, you will just kill me if you, if you use that. I do want to extend my thanks to those who are already a member here on the channel dx machina nz emperor doomsday zan zoltan snake oil sean and schmitted thank you so much for supporting me i try not to talk about this too often because i know everybody gets tired of constantly being asked to subscribe and blah 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 but at the same time i recognize that if i don't say anything people don't maybe realize it's there so thank you all for your time. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts about About Human and the terms of service or the whole wiping it every, se every season thing. To me, that seems like a much bigger deal than the terms of service, but that could be me. Let me hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Uh, if you really liked it, you can feel free to share it around, and I will catch you later.